Okay, so it's a uh, fresh rubber day for the uh, back of the Riker. Um, I ordered a tire through Discount Tire here in town on Monday. Uh, today is Saturday, and they still haven't received it yet. So end of the day yesterday, Friday, I decided, or middle of the day, I decided, you know, I'm going to hedge my bet and just go ahead and uh, order another one just in case uh, Discount Tire doesn't get theirs on time for my trip. So I ordered this bad boy from Tire Rack, the exact same tire. I got it in less than 24 hours, I'll have you know. I ordered it at 1.30 in the afternoon yesterday, and it arrived today at about 12.20 on my doorstep. And I didn't pay for her overnight. This is just, you know, regular shipping from Tire Rack. You gotta love those guys. So, the, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it's the uh, Yokohama Advan Fleva V701 205-55R15. And uh, that's what's gonna go on there today. So, the exercise now is I need to pull the clip, the rear wheel nut, and loosen up this rear fender uh, in order to get the wheel off of there. Uh, I don't think I'm going to need to pull the uh, pannier support. I might, but I think I can probably just slide off and tilt the thing out. So uh, I'm going to have to loosen that up, jack up the bike, and uh, pull this off. And then I'm also going to pull the exhaust uh, and do my rear shock while I've got this thing apart. So it'll be a little bit of a longer journey. Uh, I'll film the first part of pulling this off, see how well that works for me. I've never done it, so I don't know how it's going to play. Um, and then uh, I'll stop the recording, and I've got to get the floor jack uh, under there. First, got to pull the exhaust, and then the floor jack, and do all that. So anyway, here we go. Oh, yeah, and here's the uh, big stinking nuts you've got to get, or the 65-millimeter uh, the socket uh, for these uh, nuts on here. So good stuff. Okay, well, welcome back to my uh, adventure here. <laughs> I would like to introduce you to uh, the newest Riker accessory. It's the Yokohama Advan Backrest. It's the most uncomfortable option you can install on your Riker for those long highway journeys. Gives you fantastic lumbar support, but it also gives you a serious pain in the ass. I, <laughs> I couldn't get my... Uh, can get the rear nut off the bike. I gotta take it over to uh, Discount Tire and see if they've got uh, bigger breaker bars or impact wrenches than I do. I was jumping up and down on the uh, three quarter inch ratchet and uh, I could not break that rear nut loose. And uh, I was even using the, the plastic sandwich bag trick to keep it from marring the uh, nut, but I need about a two to three inch extension three-quarter inch extension no less uh, to space it off from the edge of the tire because there's just no room so the uh, uh, socket and the ratchet are just too deeply embedded in there to clear the edge of the tire long story short tools I bought don't work so I've got the, uh, the big 65 millimeter socket up here in the uh, front and I'm gonna take it over there and see what these guys think I forgot to bring my receipt for the other tire that I already purchased that they still haven't received yet. I got mine in 24 hours. I don't know what's wrong with them. Let me rephrase. I got mine in 23 hours. It's pretty impressive. That must mean that Tire Rack is shipping from a local distribution house, so that's uh, pretty cool. Don't understand why Discount Tire, a giant tire outlet, can't get them in less than five days, six days. What is wrong with you, Jack Off? Pulls right in front of me and then just parks. What a complete dick. So anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna go over to a discount center and see if they've got a way to break this rear nut off of there. Uh, if not, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'll go search other uh, tool shops, tool houses, and see if they've got bigger, better, badder tools. Uh, I was going to buy a three-quarter inch breaker bar over there at uh, Harbor Freight, but just the breaker bar, and we're not talking about a torque wrench, just the breaker bar was $90. No, I don't think so. I would use a half inch to three-quarter inch uh, adapter, but, you know, when you start getting into these torque ranges up in, you know, 200 plus, your chances of splitting or breaking those adapters gets uh, much higher. So, I don't know. I'll figure it out. 
I really don't want to buy a hundred dollar breaker bar for uh, something that's not going to be used more than once, you know, a couple times. <laughs> Discount Tire is closing in like two hours, so I don't know if they can get this done today. And they're not open on Sunday, so that means I'd have to come back Monday to do this. Ugh. The day is dragging on longer than I'd hoped. Oh, he's going. Find a spot, find a spot. There's my spot. I never tried to spin the tire in reverse. I don't think it'll do it. And park. Okay, well, that was a big fat fail. Uh, they said unless it exists in their system, they can't do it because of the liability, you know, all the instructions, torque specs, all that kind of stuff. I even gave them the printouts of the uh, service manual. I said, well, it still doesn't exist in our system, so we can't do it. Uh, he said Monday when the corporate opens, they can call and get clarification, uh, you know, and reference what the guys in Oklahoma uh, discount tire are doing and uh, they can note my account and then in the future they wouldn't have a problem with it but as it stands now they can't take it off of the bike uh, i have to take it off the bike i have to bring it in as a carry-in that's the only way that they can do my tire swap so i'm gonna have to go over to ace hardware or a couple of other places and try to find somebody that's got a three-quarter inch extension or a breaker bar that's less than 90 bucks i mean you the breaker bar wouldn't even do me any good at this point, I don't think, because uh, I need offset from the tire, from the, the outer edge of the tire. The, it, the mounting plane is not straight. I've got to be out at least about an inch and a half to two inches, uh, so I'm not torquing the thing at an angle. So I don't know. I'll figure it out. And discount tire is only open until five. And that is what, how far from there now? Come on, turn on, turn on, turn on. 3.50, yeah. He said they can do it in, you know, 15 minutes if I bring it to him as a carry-in. So 15 minutes worth of remount, hours worth of searching around just to find a part at least. Yeah, that's not obnoxious or anything. So let's run over here to Ace Hardware and see if I get lucky. Kind of doubt it, but you know. Yeah, the uh, manager over there at Discount Tire was real apologetic. He's saying, you know, I just, I'm not allowed to do it. Um, he said once he gets my account notated with the specifics of the vehicle, then it won't be a problem because he said, we'll probably be changing these for you pretty often, right? <laughs> I said, yeah. Probably six or seven thousand miles. I'll be seeing you. This one's got seven thousand and change on it. What am I at now? I don't even know. Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Come on. Eight thousand miles I've got on this one. Uh, but I would imagine with these more summer radial uh, automotive tires, they might be a little bit uh, softer compound. So I don't know. I figure somewhere between seven and 10,000 miles is gonna be about as long as they last. All right, let's see if Ace Hardware's got any good news for me. Oh, those are handy clapped. Oh, I see one, no I don't. Oh, here we go, this is good. Okay then. Get her done. Okay, that was another big fat no. Uh, the biggest stuff they carry here at Ace is a half inch, which is kind of what I had thought or remembered. The only places I knew that carry three quarter are Harbor Freight and their selection is pretty thin. And the Sears hardware store that used to be right up here had some of that stuff. Uh, it's always pretty expensive just because it's not common, you know. So generally the only time you need uh, three quarter inches when you're working on trucks, you know, big stuff. 
it's uh, in the high torque realm and uh, motorcycles and automotive generally don't get into that you got to get into the big diesel trucks and stuff like that and they need uh, high torque fasteners you know wheel lugs things like that so anyway it's gonna be a hunt so I have two auto parts stores right up here. I've got uh, O'Reilly on the right and uh, AutoZone on the left. So I think I'll hit uh, O'Reilly first and then circle around to AutoZone and see if either of those uh, might have what I'm looking for. If they don't have it, then I'm kind of stuck. I'll have to go to another tire shop or somewhere else that can uh, do it without the information being in their system, you know, just... Uh, throw a three-quarter inch breaker bar on there and go nuts now I don't know if I'm gonna be able to uh, torque it down without an adapter I'm gonna need an adapter one way or another we'll see okay so success at least partial success uh, they had the uh, like an eight inch extension, which is way too long uh, because I don't want to put angular torque on this uh, fastener when I'm trying to beat the hell out of it to get it off of there. Uh, but they also had a half inch to three quarter inch uh, adapter. So we'll see if uh, I can get just enough clearance to beat on that thing. Probably need to do a uh, some kind of a handle extension. I don't have any hollow tube or anything at home. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I'll go this way. Um, I don't have any hollow tube to act as an extension bar, so I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. I'll figure it out. They didn't have any breaker bars here. I guess he's letting me go. Uh, they didn't have any breaker bars, so I'm just stuck with what I've got. I've got a half-inch breaker bar. I've got that socket, or ratchet, I should say. Uh, that ratchet's not going to do me any good now uh, because I'm back down to half inch for my adapter uh, I could try the ratchet with the 8 inch extension but I'm not real fond of that uh, if I do that I'm going to need to brace up underneath the uh, pivot point so I'm not putting a whole lot of angular torque into that guy uh, I guess I can just use my floor jack underneath it to act as a pivot an interesting challenge not to uh, break out my mechanical scruples I don't think this is gonna happen before uh, 430 it's already three something and I still want to eat my pizza that's getting cold what time is it wake up wake up you bastard wake up 412 yeah it ain't gonna happen I think this is gonna be a Monday deal I've had several people being really aggressive and trying to race me and block me out today. Uh, coming out of the neighborhood, I had the genius uh, pull right out in front of me at a three-way or uh, a one-way stop. Uh, I didn't have a stop. He had a stop. I didn't have a stop. Pulls right out in front of me and then just tootles along, you know, completely oblivious. And then since then, there have been like four or five others that are just driving like complete tools, intentionally trying to block me. One guy was trying to ram me into the curb a few minutes ago. It just <laughs> buffoonery. Saturday in Houston, man. Okay, well, home again, home again. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try to take this rear wheel off, but I really doubt that it's gonna happen within the time allotted. <laughs> I left the trunk of my car open. Anyway, I'll catch up with you in a bit. Okay, I'm sitting here contemplating my actions, eating my Papa John's pizza and a, an adult beverage. So. I highly doubt that this is going to work today, you know, getting my backrest off of the bike. <sighs> so what I'm going to try now, I got a, an 8 inch breaker bar, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that, I got an 8 inch extension, 3 quarter inch extension, uh, I'm going to use my ratchet uh, to try to break it loose, if that doesn't work, then uh, I'll figure something else out. So I'm gonna go get the uh, 
floor jack. Use that to prop up underneath the bottom of this as a uh, leverage point. So I don't torque downward and around off this fastener. That would really piss me off. Time to move the food. Floor jack might run it over. Oh, that pizza's good. Well, we're going back and forth between Papa John's or Domino's today. Nobody could decide, so I pulled the trigger. Papa John's. Okay. Now how is this going to work? <clears throat> I've had brighter ideas, but this might work. Okay. Alrighty then. Get off. You came off so easy last time. Why are you being a dick now? Get! Get! Okay then. So here we go. Let's get my elevated fulcrum here. Oh. Alright, so let's keep going. Alright, I need to go down just a hair. Oh, wrong way. Oh, oh, oh. Can you get it? Can you get it? There it is. Okay, so I want to make sure that I'm level. The exercise here is I just don't want to uh, round off my fastener um, if I can avoid it. Hey, come here. I'm a little. No, I'm dead even. Oh, almost dead even. I'm missing a fraction of an inch here. I don't have any weight on this thing so it doesn't want to drop. Okay, so I'm just using the back edge here to. Uh, measure off of and that's uh, that's pretty much level okay so now I've got me a good uh, oh yep that's pretty level okay so now I have a good leverage point that I can use to try to impart a little old-fashioned torque on this guy I really need a big long bar on the end of this but I don't have anything suitable here, a little piece of, uh, what would it be, uh, something like old iron gas line, uh, gas uh, pipe would work fine, generally speaking, but at least now I'm not pushing at a weird angle downwards, so I'll make sure that jack is locked off, and I'm just going to hit it as hard as I can with a few well-placed bounces. Yep, let's turn it. I got it. Oh, 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 where there's a will, there's a way. Trying to crush the fingers. Ouchie. I got it. It wasn't possible without this as a brace because it was torquing downward uh, and also the tire was in the way without that uh, uh, extension. So. Okay. So, the nut, she is a Lewis. Excellent. Maybe I can get this done before 4.30, all right. So I'm gonna kill the camera now, because I need to wrangle with that exhaust. Well, you know, considering the time constraint, I don't think I am gonna wrangle with the exhaust. I'll do the suspension later. Let me just get this done. After a bite of pizza. Who likes a pizza? Who likes a pizza? All right. So, per the shop manual, <laughs> they want you to jack it up right here, almost in line with the inlet of the muffler on the front. So there's a couple of jacking points on the chassis, and what that's going to do is kind of lift it up and put the weight bias on the front wheels and unload the rear.
so we think. in my eyes. I can't see nothing. Hmm. My floor jack's not quite long enough for this. Let's see. I don't want to jack it up on the muffler. And of course the sun comes out at the worst possible moments. It's been cloudy and I can see what I was doing. And now it's shining in the garage and blinding me. It's fantastic. I don't think I can get you down low enough. Wait, oh, 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 can he do it? Let's fold the legs up out of here. No, nope, still not gonna be low enough. Anyway, underneath the bike here. Can he get it, can he get it? I'm sideways now, but anyway, there's a couple of jacking points in this muffler. Ah, it's really smoking hot. Um, it's just forward of the muffler uh, at the rear of the frame rails here. So what I'm going to try to do is actually jack up kind of on the uh, foot peg rails. It's kind of what it's looking like. I'm not burning my hand off. Look at Of course, you know, if I hadn't been driving the bike around, it wouldn't be hot. But, you know, I thought, I thought Discount Tire would be able to take care of me. No. No. Wishful thinking. Let's see what I contact first. I don't want to get on the transmission. That's going to be a problem. Isn't it? That's going to be a problem. Okay, so I need my extended foot. I don't want to be on the back of the, uh, it's not the transmission, it's the uh, CVT housing. Don't want to do that. That could be bad news. Don't lift your bike with the CVT, dude. I don't see where my jacking point is. Let's see if that's it right there. Yeah, that's it. It's lifting the bike. I don't hear any crunches yet. Whoa, go slow. Whoa, go slow. Lifting one side, not the other side. Unfortunately, that's all I'm gonna be able to do, I think. Hmm. It's another reason why I wanted to pull the exhaust because I was actually just gonna lift right here off the swing arm but you can't do that with the uh, exhaust in the way you guys probably can't see it from your position okay well let's be gentle with it and hope for the best yeah I'm lifting the front wheel off the ground that's not ideal I was hoping it would pivot the weight forward hmm well let's see what we can do with that rear wheel let's see if we get lucky I don't think I'm free to spin here. Well, it's getting hot out here too. No, it's still on the ground. Well, this is gonna be an adventure. Yep, that's doing it, that's doing it. I can lift the front of the bike, up, or the back of the bike up onto the front. So, it might pivot when I pull this wheel out of there, but we're gonna find out. I don't have a second jack stand, unfortunately. I do have a couple of A-frames, though. So I might pad up my A-frame. There's the nut. Um, I might pad the A-frame with a piece of rubber and support it kind of over here somewhere. Probably on the other side of the swing arm. That would be the best spot. Yeah, I'll, I'll support under the swing arm over there. Let me go get that. That works. Take a little bit of weight off of this swing line. Not a lot. That's it. That's it. Tires off the ground. It only took about maybe you know 15 pounds worth of ballast there, uh, or worth of lift. But now the uh, rear tire is free. So cool. I might actually get this done before uh, 4:30. 4:30 is kind of my cutoff for this because. Uh, discount tire closes at five and if I don't get it there soon they're not gonna be able to do it uh, oh whoops I screwed up I got to pull the uh, rear brake caliper <laughs> hey why didn't you guys tell me come on man where's my spotters for this yep there it is unscrew caliper retaining bolts from the left hand side and remove 
or move the caliper aside. Unscrew caliper retaining bolts from the left side. Okay, goody. How do we do that? How do we do that? You guys probably can't see anything because the lighting is so poor. How do we do that? Do I have to pull that fender support first? Come on, man. Caliper retaining bolts from the left side, they say. So they say. Yeah, how do you get to them? I think they're smoking crack. Must be some good crack, too. I don't see it. I am not seeing a caliper retention bolt from the left side, they say. Eh? I'm going to go ahead and pull these guys off. Wouldn't be the first Can-Am uh, instruction document that was incomplete. Hint, hint, jab, jab. First owner's manual was missing all kinds of stuff. Okay, let's play uh, size roulette. What is this going to be? I'm guessing 14. Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? 14. Did he get it? Oh, no. Is it 15 or 16? Let's try them both. 15. Oh, 15. God, I was one millimeter off. Shame on me. Okay. What do we got? Oh, that's not too tight. It's actually pretty, uh, pretty manageable. I don't know what it's supposed to be. I'm going to look up the torque specs on that in a little bit, but that's, uh, that's not tight. That's not tight at all. I didn't need a breaker bar. I like it with a hand tool. Okay, so let's spin those out of there and see if I'm lucky. Move you out of my way a little bit. Spin, 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 spin. We've got thread lock on there because they've got positive tension all the way out, it feels like. I see my fender getting wiggly. Uh, it's not coming out, guys. What the hell is going on? What in the world has Can-Am done here? That's silly. It's not loosening up. Maybe it is, but it feels like there's a bolt spinning on the back side of that. But I can't see a bolt on the other side of it, so what do I do? Just keep turning and hope for the best. It really feels like there's a bolt spinning on the back of that. Or a nut, I should say. Yeah, that's uh, it's not loosening any further. What the hell is going on? Qu'est-ce que c'est? Bombardier. Come on now. How is this supposed to be done, guys? I'm befuddled. This doesn't seem quite right. Top one seems to be distancing itself. The bottom one is not. What's up? This is not happening before 4.30. Ain't happening. Yeah, it's just spinning, spinning, spinning. I don't feel it ever really letting go. There it goes, finally. Yee. Rusty. This one, I don't know what's going on. It's not, not really loosening. Ugh, okay, that's it. So, it's only got a few threads, and then it just kind of pulls loose. All right. Okay, if you insist. Oh, look at that. That's the caliper bolts, guys. <laughs> well, they're not real specific with their instructions, are they? So, fender support caliper bolts, same damn thing. Alrighty then. Well, two birds with one stone. It'd be nice if the uh, manual factory service information kind of specified that. Maybe it does, but I certainly didn't see it. Uh, now... How do I rest this gently without scoring it up? That's the question. Because the uh, uh, rear light assembly and what looks like maybe, uh, yeah, I don't know, speed sensor, who knows what that is. We got two different lines coming out of the back of that there. And they are not going to allow full extension of this. And this thing is still ugh, in there. 
Come on now. Come on now. Not asking. Okay, so now let's try to gently roll this over and not scuff the you know what out of it. That'll work. Right until I move the tire. I need to get something soft for that to sit on. Now I've got something soft for it. There we go. Alright, hopefully it'll just kind of rest right there. Now, I don't know if you guys are still in frame. I hope you are. Wait, let's try this. Oh, looking down, shall we? There we go. Okay, so... Eeny meeny. Yep, that's it. So those are the two caliper bolts. They're the, uh, the rear fender support is what they are. So I'm just going to rest the caliper down here on the floor. And, uh, yeah, that's that. Okay. So now, I mean, look how thin this tire is getting in. It is really chunked up. All right, let's see if we can pull this guy off of there and not uh, mess anything up. <coughs> wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Try not to mess up the splines. Hey, there's a conical washer. Out, muffler's hot. And I'm into the fender or something here. Why am I not coming out? There it goes. Yeah, it's the, the front fender on the... Uh, on the front of the swing arm that was in the way. Okay, wheel off, cool. So here's what uh, ride-on tire sealant looks like in the inside of the tire uh, from the Riker. That's the, uh, the pattern that it sprayed out. It looks like there's a void right there, but that might have been from taking it off of the wheel. But yeah, so there's, uh, that's how it distributes itself in there. Pretty cool. He's having a little trouble getting it on the rim here. It's really tight. Oh my God. Super tight, eh? Yeah, I'm used to doing my motorcycle tires at home, but something with this thick of a lip, man, I don't want to mess with tire irons. Yeah. Hey, watch out, Tony. Yeah, how much Tony, PSI guys, is? Guys. I can't. See you next month. Yeah, do you know how much the PSI? Um, just bump it up to like 36. I'll set it when I get home. Okay. You can do whatever you need to seat it, but. Hey, I need to charge you, but yep. you're gonna come get that tire. No, I'm getting it. Yeah. Get it in. Okay. Come pick it up. No worries. Okay. So you want to charge me now or later yeah, or whatever? Whatever that what deal was. We'll sort it out. Do, yeah. We'll sort it. Out. I mean, but I come I'm in here for all my cars and stuff, so you guys just tell me what you need and. Point. There's that bead. I'm gonna put it on the balancing machine and uh, we'll be done with it. Balancing up a Riker tire on an automotive balancer. Different color. It's not quite hub centric. Yeah, it's not quite hub centric. I'm seeing the wheel bounce around, so. Sure. 
You don't have a collar that fits in there? I didn't bring the conical washer that mounts it on the wheel on the front side. Yeah, this is going inside here. Right, That's the problem. Right. So I'm trying to figure out how he wants to do You guys it. aren't open tomorrow, are you? No, it's on Sunday. No. Hey, so every Sorry. time I bolt it on, like we have a cone that fits, but like it's going inside. And then it's water. I don't know how you want to balance it, but you want to put space on there. If you can't get it, then I've got a balancer uh, at home, you know, a motorcycle balancer that I can probably fit it up on. Mm. It has a conical washer that fits on it when you mount it on the bike, but I didn't bring that with me. I didn't think about that. You got different cones over there. I'm videoing this because nobody does these Rikers. Uh, it's only a few motorcycle shops that'll do it. And Can Am only approves Kenda tires, those pieces of shit, to go on here. And the dealers are not allowed to put anything else on there. So, hey, that's uh, pretty hub centric right there. I don't see it wiggling. Uh, this goes on back there. Kinder tires are shit. There you go. They are shit. They are absolute shit. That thing, since it was brand new, has been so slippery. It didn't matter whether I was in wet or dry. And that's supposedly an all-season tire. Yeah, blow me. It's a joke. Uh, so anyway, um, this exact tire has been very popular on the back of Spiders, the other three-wheel. Balances out very well, too. Cool. So, hey, look at that. Okay, whoops. I'm hitting the machine. Cool. Didn't even need uh, weights. What the hell? Balanced out without any weights. That's impressive. Uh, yeah. Well, he got the you know he got the light spot pretty close to the stem, so that works. Cool. I'm happy. Good to go. Okay. For any of you uh, home gamers that decide to do this on the uh, Riker, when you take off this uh, brake rotor. Probably not going to show up very well on camera. I would need to get a macro lens of some kind, but these th holes are really, really dirty. Uh, they're very nasty, uh, and they've also got a bunch of thread lock in them. So trying to get the brake rotor back on is uh, quite a trick. Um, it's not screwing in. The bolts are getting into the threads, but then they just absolutely refuse to spin down. Uh, I'm putting, you know, 30 pounds of torque on them just to get them to turn in. So that's no bueno. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm running a tap through there. And I'm trying to figure out what I did with my tap. I think it fell into the tire. Yes, it did. Um, I'm running a, uh, a tap set through it. Uh, it is a 10 millimeter by 1.5 thread. Uh, so 10 by 1.5. And I'm using that to kind of chase the threads and clean them up, and I mean they are dirty, dirty, dirty. It's taken me two or three run-throughs, uh, you know, go in a turn or two, back it out a half a turn, go in another turn or two, back it out, and you know, just gently chasing the thread holes and pulling it out of there and cleaning it off and going back in. Uh, so far I've been down four of the holes three times each, and every time I do it I'm still coming out with uh, crap, you know, whether it's... Uh, Loctite or uh, aluminum shavings, and I'm not cross-threading. This is just cleaning up. I'm only chasing, uh, so these holes aren't real clean, at least in my wheel. Uh, so if you're going to pull that brake rotor off of there, you might want to uh, invest in a uh, a tap, 10 millimeter by 1.5, and uh, clean those threads up before you try to run your uh, rotor bolts back down there because I was really, really cranking them, and they were not going in. 
So that's going to obviously offset your torque value and not get your uh, rotor seated back on there properly. So anyway, uh, this is the process. If you've never used a tap and die set, generally it's going to come with a handle uh, and you just set this guy on there and you're going to run it in. It should go in pretty easy the first few rotations until you start getting to binding right here and see I'm already binding up and what's happening right there is this tap is essentially cutting or cleaning the threads that are there and as I pull it out now we'll see what it brings up with it in the uh, the grooves. It's already getting tight again. I've already been halfway down this hole twice now before I grab the camera. So I don't know if any of this shows up on camera or not. I'm trying to get it over in front of the lens, but there's a lot of uh, aluminum flashing and uh, you know, Loctite and debris, detritus, whatnot. So anyway, long story short, it'd be a good idea to clean up those holes before you go running your uh, uh, bolts back in there. You can see how clean this one is already. So I'm just going to finish that out, run all the way uh, down through each one of these, get them cleaned up, and then uh, uh, remount my rotor. Okay, as usual, I start filming long after the uh, issue has presented itself and I'm already almost done with it. But uh, what I'm doing is just running this uh, 10 by 1.5 millimeter tap through this, uh, the threads in the six mounting holes for the brake rotor. And you can see it's getting stuck on a lot of crap. Uh, the, uh, the threads in this thing are pretty dirty and what I'm pulling up is not only the Loctite but a lot of aluminum chunks. Sorry for the camera work here, I'm wearing a chest rig. Uh, I've already been down this hole at least three times and it's still getting bound up on crap. So chasing these holes is a really good idea for anybody that decides to pull their rotor off. Again, maybe mine was just made on a Mexican holiday but uh, I'm pulling up a lot of aluminum uh, and it's gumming up the works here. I think I've been down all six holes now. This one's still looking a little dirty, uh, but you can see how shiny the threads are on all of them. Uh, when I started a minute ago, they were just crud, you know. Whoops, I lost my die. Uh, it was just crud, and I wasn't able to run the uh, bolts in. I was putting 25 to 30 foot-pounds on them just to barely get them spinning, and they weren't even seated yet. So that's, uh, that's no bueno. Uh, but with a a tap if you've never used these before. You want to try to start them by hand with your fingers. See how tight this already is? That shouldn't be tight like that. Um, you want to run them in manually first. That way you can make sure you're in the threads and you're not cutting fresh threads. Um, you never want to cut fresh if you can avoid it unless you've got a seriously stripped piece that needs help. These just need chased. Get on there. Ooh, is it the right hole? Yep, this up. So generally how you run these things is you go in about a half a turn or a full turn and then you back it up a quarter turn just to break up the crap that's in the threads instead of driving it further down in uh, the bore so just back it up a little bit and that helps the detritus get sucked up into the grooves in your tap I hope I'm keeping you guys on camera I have no clue so I'm just running this most of the way down in there, uh, I'm not wanting to bottom it out. I, I think this the hole goes deeper than the tap is long, but uh, I don't need to go full depth. I just need to be able to cover the length of these guys, so that's plenty deep for now. Uh, but again, I should have recorded before I did all this to kind of show you the process, but you know, as is typical, I'm just trying to get it done. And uh, I want to get this thing put back together tonight, hopefully, while there's still daylight, and go out and roll it around on the road a little bit. So you can probably see, let me touch the screen, see if I can get this on there. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but there's a whole bunch of crap, and that's m aluminum shavings. That's metal filings in there, just from dirty threads. It, it was not cut and milled out properly. Anyway. So now I should be able to get this brake rotor back on there a whole lot more better than it was uh, coming off the first time, or going on the first time.
Get that seated back on there. Yep, it looks like all the holes are lined up. And now, this was my problem child that I was having so much difficulty with. Uh, I just could not spin this bolt in at all. Uh, yeah, now it's going in just finger. It's easy. Um, all of them had significant difficulty going in, uh, but that one just wouldn't go in, period. And uh, it was the first one that I started reaming out with the thread, uh, or with the tap, and I was pulling up so much gunk. Oh my god. And it wasn't just Loctite. It was, uh, it was aluminum. So, I don't know if when I powered the bolt out, uh, it was dragging threads up with it or what the deal was, but I was definitely not happy. I've already got Loctite on these, so just putting them back in. So ideally you should be able to spin these in finger tight until you get, you know, at least halfway down the thread when the Loctite starts getting in your way. Yeah, so they're going in just fine. And yeah, I haven't read the manual, but I'm sure, you know, you need to tighten these in a crisscross pattern just like anything else that's uh, circular or square or, you know, has opposing torque surfaces. And uh, if I recall, these are 61 or 62 foot-pounds each, so they're going to take a fair crank to get tight. I'm going to run them in with the impact gun first, just you know, zap them lightly with the impact gun, and then I'm going to come back and do uh, the torque wrench. Yep, those threads are clean now. So if you don't have a... 10 by 1.2, or sorry, 10 by 1.5 millimeter tap. Uh, before you start that project, you might want to get one because my bolts were not going back in. And the the risk you run if they're really tight and crudded up with whatever it is, whether it's Loctite or metal detritus, uh, you're going to end up goring and stripping uh, the threads on the way in, uh, and then again on the way out. If you ever take them back out, you're just going to obliterate the threads. So it's better to chase them while you can. So the factory uh, shop manual says 63 foot-pounds, so I've already got the wrench dialed up for that. Ready, tidy and can I get on there without the extension? Yeah, I can. Okay, not quite there yet. Doing a couple stages. Okay, so that's stage one, and now I think I'm going to go ahead and put my extension back in there, so I've got some higher leverage up here where I need it to be, and give her a crank until it clicks. Oh, can't get a good angle on it. Let me sit down. Oh, ho, ho, ho. hey, come here. Now I'll be able to pull at it. Okay. 63, here we come. Click. I was right there, I just didn't pull hard enough. 63. 63. Okay. torqued up not to be confused with forked up all right so I'll go ahead and remount this guy I I checked the balance on it and it's as close as I could get it their machines more accurate than I am and 
it worked out. I put it on my uh, little manual wheel balancer over there and worked like a champ. So, um, yeah, here we go. All right. I apologize for the lighting again. I don't feel like going out or getting my big shop lights to shine on this because I can still see even if the camera can't. Um, so, yeah, uh, just fitted the wheel up in there. has to go in a little diagonally to clear the uh, max mount up here in the corner and also the uh, the lip of the fender is kind of in the way, but no big deal. Anyway, this is the uh, conical washer that seats against the uh, inner part of the wheel hub and then the uh, flat part uh, faces out toward the nut. So we'll just get that guy in there. Clean off the surface of this. A little schmutz on there. I'm not going to bother lubricating it. They don't mention anything about that in the manual, so I'm not going to do it. And get the threads lined up and spin her on. Now I have to find my uh, nut, or uh, my socket rather. Oh crap, I think I left my socket. <gasps> don't tell me. I left my socket there. No, say it's not so. I'll find it. It's got to be here. No, I didn't leave it there. Tell me no. Tell me it didn't happen. <laughs> That's gonna suck. What did I do with it? No, it's here. Oh, it scared me. I remember bringing everything home except for this, but this was already here. Ta-da! So, what we've gotta do now is just get this thing snugged up and then I'm going to, uh, torque it when it's down on the ground. Obviously, I don't want to bang the bike around too much while it's lifted up. So that's that. Uh, give this big monkey a turn here. Hey, there we go. Get in there. Get, get. Okay, so that's snugged. Now uh, I've got to drop the bike to uh, be able to impart some serious torque on this thing and it's going to be a trick because it's got to be facing kind of this way to go downward on it so i have to put my floor jack back in here the way that i did a minute ago to give me a, a leverage point to stabilize the uh, wrench i got stuff falling out of my shelves uh and i got to get it up to 221 foot pounds so i need to break out my new torque wrench and uh set up the jack so i'll be back after that okay so here we go Look at this big nasty monkey. Woohoo, that's a big old head. Look at that compared to the hand, size of my hand. I don't have big hands, but that's pretty big. So, three quarter inch drive. Uh, it goes up to, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but 300, and, yeah, 300 foot pounds. So, I've got it dialed up to exactly 221. And we're going to give this thing a, a what for? See if it works out. Let's see if we can get it in there. I set my uh, my jack to be just a touch above level because when I put torque on it, it's going to go downward. So uh, the bike is on the ground and stationary. So let's see what we get out of this. Right there. So with this, this is an eighty dollar. I think it was seventy nine or eighty nine dollar uh, three quarter inch uh, torque wrench from Harbor Freight. Uh, it's got a long enough arm that I'm able to do the 221 foot-pounds without even putting my entire weight on it so you don't need an extension bar or anything so that's it 221 we're set tire change complete okay so the rule with this is when you put your rear wheel or any of the wheels back on you tighten it to the torque spec and then you look for the nearest hole where the circlip lock can go in there uh, if you're not lined up, you don't back it out to get it lined up. You go tighter. So now I've got to figure out if I'm close enough to one of the holes. I'm just past one. The bottom one is here. There's a top one there. That one is lined up right there. So that's my guy. I've got a couple of scuffs on my rim here. I don't know if the guys did that or if I did that. Huh, yeah, I've got a little scuffing inside the, the wheel area here. I'll have to sort that out. Anyway. So this one is lined up. I'll try to do this. Trying to do this one-handed. Sorry, holding the light with one hand and clip with the other. So that goes in there, 
and then ugh, can he do it with his fingers oh he got it so considering how easy that comes off i never realized how easy that was i'm going to zip tie this monkey i don't have any of my uh stainless safety wire that i normally use uh but i'm gonna cinch that up to where it's a little harder for it to come loose by itself right, let's see if i can bring you in here to show you the action here This video is coming out. I keep seeing like flashes and scratch weirdy kind of artifacts in my video screen on this camera. Hopefully it's not uh, freaking out. So I don't know if you can see. I've got a few little scuffs here and there. I'm not sure if that was from the the nut or if it was the guys when they were mounting it up on their balancing machine. But anyway, we'll survive. So what I'm going to try to do here is thread this uh, around and through. Oh, I think I will. Hmm. I'll get down here with the work. Ugh. <laughs> Several people have mentioned to me that I need to get a, one of those motorcycle lifts. Well, that'd be nice. I wouldn't mind that. <laughs> but all the stuff I'm doing, generally, I don't really know how a motorcycle lift is going to help me. It might. I wouldn't turn it away. I might try to get one of those someday. All right, here we go. I think I got it. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. Come here. Oh, come on now. Got that right in there. This has got to go through here. Oh, corn now. Ah. Let's see if I can curve it. Uh huh. Oh, who's your daddy? Get under there. Thank you. Alright, so I got the lighting and the camera work. I'm holding a flashlight in my mouth. Uh -huh. There we go. So, what I'm going to do is just cinch these together, give a little extra tension to where it wants to stay on that uh, recessed area there. Yeah. Tighten it up. And what I'm going to do is use these bullnose dikes right here to cut it flush, and then I'll rotate that thing around to where it's out of my way. I think I will. I think I will. There you go. You can't even see it, right? 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 Anyway, that's it for my uh, tasks today. I ran out of time, and uh, I'll do my rear shock uh, manana. I have to pull the exhaust and uh, be able to get in here. Probably can't get you in a, the right angle to see it, but right in there is the linkage. The tire's kind of in the way, but the exhaust is definitely in the way. So if I can get the exhaust out of there, I can reach up under and get a hold of that to get the lower shock mount, uh, the bolt out of that guy, and uh, put in my new fancy uh, Elka, stage four. Now the one thing I haven't gotten yet, uh, I ordered it, was the uh, aluminum bracket uh, that holds the uh, remote reservoir on there. This one is plastic and people say that it kind of breaks or whatever. So I went ahead and ordered the uh, billet aluminum one and uh, it hasn't arrived yet, but I can always put that in after the fact. So I'm going to get that uh, Elka stage four in here before my trip. So I've got full stage four. Anyway, thanks for tagging along everyone. See you later. Don't hit nothing, don't hit nothing, don't hit nothing. Especially that nice black car right over here. Oh, don't hit nothing. Oh, he made it so far. Whoa, that was close. These things are hard to back up because they got such a short wheelbase, they turn like quickly and inadvertently. Okay, so now it's time for the uh, obligatory uh, test drive, test ride. Is it a ride or a drive if you're on a Riker? Handlebars, so that means it's a ride. Um, okay, so, you know, if it doesn't stop or uh, the wheel falls off, that means I missed something. I had discount tire set it at 36 pounds in the back, which is a little high, but again, this is a regular automotive radial, so... That's probably a pretty good pressure for it. I'll have to play with it and see how it feels in the corners and all that, but I won't really know for sure until I get the uh, new front tires on here and get everything balanced out as far as traction and tread style and all that. I'm going to get these crappy all-season tires off of the front now. And the back tire is going to be a little slippery. I fully expect that being new. I'm going to have to scrub it up a bit get the uh, shipping coatings off of it. 
That's a very bright light. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, we gotta go back and look at that. Oh, that's too good. Okay, I have to go back. Got a flip a U E. They've got a skeleton garage band. That's the greatest, man. Complete with fog machine. Oh, that's the bomb. Oh, yeah, you win. You win. Nicely done. <laughs> got the garage band going. I got a trap set there and a skeleton sitting at the the drums. They got uh, a couple of guys with guitars here. Uh, not enough light on these guys, but here's your vocalist, and he's got a guitar. Nice. They got an amp. <laughs> Sleet. Very slick. All right. I'm getting another look at it. Back up, back up, back up. I'm going to do my mute on this uh, beeper. I'm going to put some tape over that little speaker hole, see if it quiets it down. I hate putting it in reverse because it's so obnoxious. That is really cool. Congratulations, well done. <sighs> Fog machine and all. <laughs> and it's fogging up everything over here. Okay, so back out to the uh, road over here and I'm gonna abuse it a little bit. Scrub in this rear tire properly. Who cares about proper break-in? I'm gonna scrub it in track style. Still spinning a little bit. Let's get some uh, get some heat in that thing and scrub off all the shipping coatings. Anything's got to be better than that, Kenda. Roast it. Ah, rubber. And of course, I've got this thing aired up. You know, what is it? Uh, six pounds above, six or eight pounds above what uh, k and says. I think it was 28 for the rear. I've got it sitting at 36 right now, so it's probably a little uh, hard. Won't get quite as much traction as it should. Hey, sit there, buddy. A uh, little less air pressure in it, and it'll probably grip better. breaking loose that's good it's better than the kenda the kenda at 35 miles an hour i could just hammer it in sport and it would start squirreling the back end around this one is staying planted so that's already an improvement i want to haul ass through my own neighborhood here let's get down to 35 and punch it again yeah, i felt a tiny bit of slip there but not, not as much as the kenda much more grip than the Kenda. That hooked up and left. That was good. The Kenda would have spun enough that it tripped the traction control and retarded the motor. Yep, no spin. That's good. That's good. I think this is going to be a good tire. Now, I don't know how it's going to behave out on the highway with groove pavement and whatnot, but you know, we're going to find out. It does have very large uh, circumferential grooves on it, so I don't know. It might have a problem or propensity to track rain grooves, but we'll see. These are considered uh, high performance or ultra performance summer radials from Yokohama, so uh, generally speaking, those are really good on you know, in a car application, they're very good for highway and dry weather riding and whatnot. So we'll see how it goes. Rear traction in the wet can't be any worse than that uh, Kenda had. No, I say it can't. I'm assuming it can't. Not much can be worse than those Kendas. I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm not a fan of the Kendas. Like Canada tires. 
On a bicycle? Okay, yeah, sure, whatever. On the Riker? No. Oh yeah, that's good grip right there. That's good grip. The Kenda would have kept sliding or kept spinning and the traction control would have fired. It would have given up. But that was enough go that uh, it let it slip a little bit and the bike was accelerating hard enough that there wasn't a big discrepancy between rear wheel and front wheel speed. So the traction nanny didn't jump in and shut me down. Good stuff. I'll let you know more what I think about it as the miles pile on. I'm at uh, 81.57 right now. So by the time I finish my Arkansas trip, I'll probably be up at the 10,000 mark. So at least 1,500, probably 1,800 miles or so, which is kind of what we did last time uh, on the scooters and then again on the Super Cubs. Last time on the Super Cubs, we went further. We went all the way up to Missouri. So that one was uh, just shy of 2,000 miles. I think my scooter trip up there on the PCXs was 1,600 miles and change, 1,650, something like that. So that's probably be about what this one is. Maybe a little further because I'm going to be going up to McKinney, then Tyler, then back over and up. So I'm going to be adding a couple hundred miles there. We'll see. Man, look at all the fog from that fog machine. That's cool. <laughs> okay then. So. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to embark on my uh, add more rear brake light. I might because now I saw exactly where the wiring harness is. I don't know if I want to tear it open or not, but uh, I'll decide tomorrow or Monday. Uh, but at the very least, I'm going to put that uh, Elka Stage 4 on the back of this and uh, see how it plays. I might eventually get some end links for this thing, uh, Baja Ron or another brand. Uh, I don't know who else is out there, but... Uh, That'll pretty much round out the suspension and the upgrades for this guy. Anyway, thanks for tagging along.